Hello and welcome back to Redeeming Thunder. My name is Erica and I'm going to give you a prophetic word given on 8-29-2023. Kasitama. Journey. The place of treasury. Silver and more. Cassifia, silver reflecting, gleaming silver white. Idiomatology, Cassap, pale or reflect, Cassap, silver. Serious thought or consideration, possible by Yah, the name of the Lord. Town called Cassifia. References Ezra 8.17, residence of Edom. The seer, chief of Nathanium. Ezra acquired a contingent of Templars to reboot the temple service of Jerusalem. So, a place in North Babylonia near the river Ahava. And he sent forth ministers for the house of God. Kasiphia. You remember, it means reflect number two it means silver refers to money now it has yod and has elf as these pictographs Hebrew letters which has a clenched fist form function and held in one's hand one's power So, the treasure can be held in one's hand. Sefer, book, re record, or account. Sapar, to create a record or relate on account. He creates or created a record. He is cre crafting, was creating a record. Did you hear that? He's keeping track of the Jesus is keeping track. There is a book up there and he is writing down our acts of humanity. We don't go to heaven. It's not about acts. But remember when you do something to someone, it's like if you're doing it to Jesus. Okay. So it matters. The acts of humanity matters because he's looking for loving kindness, fruits of the spirit. And that references five eight Matthew five eighteen. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one title shall and no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Familiar phrase is Samak, laying of the hands, laying on Samak. It's the 15th letter of the Hebraic alphabet. Kasifia is the silver of the Lord. It's H3703. So if you want to look that up. Is it also a place? Um, Kasifia is also a place in Babel, Babylon. And it means silvery. H3101. Treasure of are the ministers of God because they are the ones to give the incense of praise and worship to the Lord and opens the heavens to blessings when you praise Ezra eight seventeen, and I sent them with commandment unto Edo the chief at the place Kasiphia and I told them what they should say unto Edo and to his brethren, and the Nethinims at the place, Cassiphia, that they should bring unto us ministers for the house of God.
Okay. So, Casifia is money, covetousness, envious, silvery white. It's a place in North Babylonia, near the river of Ahava, to which Ezra sent for ministers for the house of God. Something is key here. Why does it keep repeating that? First, Ezra 8.45 is a place of treasury. You know where the place of treasury is? Is where the Levites, the, pray, the priests who worship God. This is a clue. This is a huge treasure clue. Remember, the treasure is not always money. But in this instance, it is. But it also means you reach that silvery treasure through worship. But this is the thing. They couldn't obtain it. It wasn't given to them yet because something was happening. Okay? Some reconciliation was needed. Some There was some high anxiety going on. And when you're in high anxiety mode... You're not in full faith mode. There's a key phrase here. Ahava. Near the Ahava River. The river in Babylonia on the banks of which Ezra gathered together the, who accompanied him to Jerusalem. Why did they gather near the river? You know what Ahava means in Hebrew? It means love. That's a clue right there too. That's key. That's the key that unlocks. Elohim, Ahava, is how some of us... Um, Give honor to God. It means the God who loves. Ahava means to love. God's love for his own is. Deuteronomy 4.37. Delivered out of slavery. He did that because he loves. Deuteronomy 7.8. I have loved you with an everlasting love. The key here is love. Hosea 11.1 1, Ahava, love, pity. God will redeem and carry Israel. There's a point to this. It, Isaiah 63.9 He will do it with his own people. God's love requires active hearts. Humani humanity. Deuteronomy 6.5 we're wanting treasure, money. We're wanting to advance. We're wanting upgrades, let's just say. But we don't have love. Doesn't want our life to, our heart to go bitter and corroded with the love for money. He's talking about loving us. We need to love our enemies. We need to love each other, pray for each other. That is the key to getting the silver. And this is how this happens, okay? Something happened. Keep his charge, love, ahab, his statutes, his rules, his commandments to, to serve him. Deuteronomy 11, 1, 1, 13, and 1, 22. Active love, much joy, blessing, sacrifice, love, devotion, and hold on to faith. God gave his son because he had Ahava us, loved us, John 3, 16. Ahava love that remains silent, concealed. It's a divine intervention with divine light. Calls for repentance and conversion. It invites man to come to him and Savior. That is the intervention. That is the concealed love. It is one going to repent. And there is a supernatural intervention happening within that humbleness of prayer. Okay. 
So Zephaniah 317 remains silent in his love. What that means is silent of sins, not rehashing. So we should also do the same and not rehash. And then Psalms 116, 1, I love the Lord. He has heard my voice. He's released silver treasure to send ministers, send us priests to serve in the temple of the Lord. Rebuilding. With God's help, they sent us able men, Jeremiah, a Levite, from the clan of Mali, with 18 of his sons and relatives to desire God, a call to the Ahava Canal to humble ourselves before God and pray for wisdom, guidance for the journey. Because there were bandits on the journey Bandits would be demonic forces, um, demonic plans. We needed, they needed of bodyguards when traveling. So that need, you need to call for angelic protection. You know why? Because there needs mercy, sanctification, re Ritual would be fasting and praying. Only if the Lord calls you to do so, you go ahead and do that. Okay, so this is what's going on. When the exiles returned, the once purified only remnant of Israel to continue covenant relationship, the Holy Seed, children of Israel, a.k.a. Holy, this of this, self-confident in God, is key. Problem focus strategy. Reasons why with those who remain, remain behind that they were one people. So this is what happened. There is two groups. Exiles, so are they're called the Holy Seed, children of Israel, and then there was a exiles of Babylon that they're called remained behind. So they're not necessarily the ones that were going to receive the abundance and the inheritance just yet because they still have a lot of soul searching work to do, healing to do, okay? But the exiles were in having some bitterness towards the exiles of Babylon when the exiles had to return and they had to coexist in this land. The exiles did not want to hang out, share the land with the ones that remained behind because there was some lack of trust due to um, them feeling more holy than the others. There was some lack of trust due to feeling threatened like they were going to be getting attacked again. This is necessary because the Lord has moved some of us to back to the land to claim territory. And um, there are some non-successful coping strategies that were occurring. So the exiles had some issues within their own to reserve observe the sabbath on a certain day the land of judah as desolate wanting for them to return by deleting those that remain behind the babylonian exiles from israel so that basically means some of us are feeling like the only way that this land can flourish and become good and um thrive is if the sinners no longer are in that land that we need to ask God to remove them completely like let's just pretend they don't exist and ignore them altogether and um, treat them like they're invisible 
That's what they had done. I'm saying that they did that. But why is God bringing this up? Maybe because history is repeating itself. Okay. The coping strategy by the exiles was those who remained behind in facing problems and self-idol. So there's those remain behind. Babylonian exiles are still in self-idol. They're still facing the same problems that they did many years ago. The exiles have conquered those problems. Okay, the exiles, tough challenge of knowing that they are exiles, created a distorted perception of home as an empty land created by the Judean exiles. But the land was not empty during Babylonian ex exiliac period. And the return, intense animosity between two groups and a problem-focused coping strategy complaining was not feasible. So now just complaining is occurring. Where is the gold? Where is the silver? Where is the promised land, um, abundant life? It's not here yet because we, the coping strategy is not God-focused. The coping strategy is not living without anxiety. It's complaining mode. It's emotional focused. The coping strategy of the Holy Seed is blaming game. Excusing behavior by focusing on the empty land factor. They're basically calling it empty land because they're acting like um, it's not cozy. It's not welcoming. And it's not um, a place that they even want to build. So they're not maybe distracted. You're, and more complaining is happening and not much prayer is happening right now. Of rebuilding. Because when we're saying we're rebuilding the temple, we're building the land within ourselves. Of not falling back into bitterness. Not falling into... Um, vengefulness you know because some of these we're getting some some backbiting okay because you moved into the territory and some of these people don't like you there putting severe humiliation loss of identity and self-esteem into perspective empty land egyptian exiles group remained and then there's another group remain behind so the remain behind group are blaming the exiles that are the Israelites, the Holy Seed. That they are not able to enjoy their life because you're back in town. And somehow that's hindering the vibe in the community. In the, 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 the It seems like the city's not big enough for, for the both of you. Okay? That's what the, that we, they were experiencing back in the day. So there's some dignity, pride, egocistic ego attitudes, bitterness, and there's self-esteem has been destroyed. And you haven't even been blessed yet. You haven't even got to be, you know, to that extreme level of thousands and millions yet, okay? Just you thriving all on your own in this moment, just not engaging in that negativity um standing your ground claiming your territory is already disturbing the babylonian remain behind group ezra 11 5. okay so now this is what's going on now there's the strained relationship is causing a cursed land Defied divine order to order to remain in land, initiated process of their own extinction. So what's going on is some people are not falling through and moving out of the land before God said to move out. Some people are starting to um, walk backwards in their journey and are enduring grief and um when it says extinction, that means that their sin and their um, their sin and their witchcraft, basically, 
slander and gossip could be causing a lot of strife, wrath. Okay, so now... Um, empty Judah issue. Evidence of division between the exiles and the re remain behind are Jeremiah 24, good and bad figs. Sent from Abraham, possession of the land, Ezra 11, 14 through 21, and 33, 23 through 29. Now we have some more notes here. Exiles perceiving themselves as only representatives of the Judeans. Purity values in Second Temple community. Holy Seed coping strategy is during reintegration. There's another theory going on. This is during the Nehemiah, Nehemiah stage where he wanted to rebuild, okay? And it's good and all, but he was excluding an entirely other group and they weren't coming here to fight at first. Listen to this story. Excel self, self made, Ezra and Nehemiah, non-returning group is the majority of the population the benjaminites so exos wrath against abominations of judeans called for purification of the land for a safe future this theory before book of nehemiah and ezra was written pre-late prison period we're going to talk about that coping strategies reintegration of yehud life of the return exiles and ezra nehemiah Ezra 3.3, exiles established after foundations, even though they were in terror of local people. So now let's focus on this behalf. They have moved back, but now they're still in terror or they're still experiencing some kind of PTSD, some kind of anxiety from all the crazy madness attacks that they experienced from before. So they don't really trust these people. They don't want to build with them and rebuild the temple with them. So they already have a negative mentality state, living in constant terror and spiritual battle, feeling unwelcomed. It's like a fight or flight mode. And that's distracting them from the building mode. So it's a not, not a sound mental state, a non-resting state, mental state. That is not the faith or trusting state. So you got to transition into that state because that's when you're ready for the promised land. You can't go into the promised land with anxiety and non-resting mentality state. Chapter four, then when returnees rejected the offer of help to rebuild the temple by that so-called enemies, the people of the land discouraged the people of Judah and made them afraid to build. So now one could think the the atmosphere of fear is rejection. Non-acceptance felt like they're trying to boot us out. So they were just getting, you may be feeling this. This is why the Lord is bringing it up. Not only the people from the past going into the same neighborhood, the same city, you're feeling a rip load of rejection. A grip load of problems of them continuous nonsense ridiculous selfishness but yet then the new neighbors are also causing havoc the issues also can move into the workforce and schools and it could feel like rejection all around okay it could feel like, why did we even move here? What was the whole point? If all it's going to be is a bunch of strife and a bunch of problems and a bunch of rejection and a bunch of um, roller coaster emotional ride. Okay, so now bribes to frustrate, to purposely frustrate. Cyrus, king of Persia, even told Darius King of Persia to cause emotional mental strain. 
this really did happen. So what happened is the exiles took 19 to 20 years to rebuild the temple. While King Solomon only took seven years to rebuild a grander, splendid temple. And they were not in strife, though. So right now, we are building the temple. Us. Rebuilding. So, getting rid of old habits, old mindsets, old way of thinking, not feeling, not feeding into the thought of the rehash. True forgiveness of these people. True forgiving these people. You can set boundaries. You don't have to let them back in how they were before. I didn't say that. Okay. Now, this is the other issue going on. Chapter 9. Ezra, the holy seed, makes itself with people of the lands. Now, Nehemiah tore his garment and row and pulled out his hair out of his head and beard and basically that's an out of control mentality state chapter 10 meeting to break mixed marriages so now nehemiah he's supposed to be this grand leader leading god's people yet now he's telling everybody to, that whoever married those of the remained land if if the exiles the holy seed married them he wants all of those people to get divorced and that was not even their customs threats of harsh force to divide he would take their land from them if they don't their property their land and they have to forfeit and become exiles out of that that land if they don't, if they refuse to get a divorce. So some of us are wanting people to evolve and grow with the Lord. And some of us are focusing so much on being extremely religious and exploding on one another. And he's giving a really good example here that he went to the extent of pulling his hair out. Okay, it gets worse. Okay, so then Nehemiah chapter 4, during rebuilding of the wall, being indifferent, excluding people, being grumpy, felt threatened by own people, felt offended. Chapter 13, throws Tobias furniture outside of the chamber in the courtyard of the temple, quarreling with nobles of Judah over the bath in mixed marriage, people then cursing people, then beating some men, then pulling out their hair, being abusive. So how he's trying to say that the remained exiles of Babylon were super wicked and evil and and um, not holy. Then he was becoming destructive. In his own way, trying to get people to be holy. It was false righteous. It was not allowing God to work in people's hearts at God's timing. It was being impatient. It was forcing his own timing for change. Now, many people are waiting for prodigals to change. Yet, in this time frame, we're still waiting for the inheritance and the, and the abundance and the promised land. And, you know, moving forward with all that. And the silver that the Lord was talking about. But guess what? Then there's this attitude of let's hurry up people so we can get our riches. I mean, God sees everything. That's so rude. He doesn't want us to act like Nehemiah. Okay? Hurry up and, and get divorced and or I'm going to rip your hair out. I'm going to throw things all over the house. I'm going to scream and yell at you because you're unright. You're not holy. You're not righteous. But then that one that's saying all that is the one that's being the more so more unrighteous than everybody else. 
And then God is punishing by cursing the people and then cursing them to take forever to build the temple. All right, so now, on the other hand, exiles are restored. Religious, political, economic freedom. On the other hand, they are threatened from with... Now, this is what's going on. The exiles of Babylon already reached out five times. If you read that whole book, they reached out five times. They didn't reach out one time. to. They wanted to build the temple together. But Nehemiah said no five times. So, some of these people that are not God's covenant people maybe have been trying to restore somewhat some have maybe not the best of intentions but are at least trying to function but one could be taking it to the full extreme and reliving havoc and that's not what God called us to do in this hour okay so the hostile in relations between the exiles and who remain behind. It is not a smooth integration. Now they are fighting them. So now, because Nehemiah kept saying no five times, now they did come and are trying to destroy their building. Building up. The temple. They are fighting. So some are building and some are fighting, okay? That's what the Lord says in this hour, we're going to have to build and we're going to have to build with one hand and fight with the other. So reconciliation. Okay. Coping strategy, forging unity between groups, reconciliation and unity. For them, it took 20 years. I don't know about you, but I don't want to take 20 years. Ezra, but it take one... One has to be ready to build and not rehash and not feed into non-forgiveness and vengefulness. Okay? Ezra 3, 10 through 13. When builders laid the foundations, people shouted with a great shout, sound heard from far away. Okay, Ezra 4, 1 through 2. Heard about rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem and they came to offer help. Zebu, Zerubbabel and leaders rejected the offer. That's where it says that. This was the opportunity to reconcile this and cease hostility. The rejection of the land. The rejection emotionally focused coping strategy of the exiles, Holy Seed. Identity because they felt it was empty land myth of the people of the land set the tone for the rest of the reconstruction of the temple people of the land felt exclusion exclusion so called enemies requested a meeting with Nehemiah remember we said five times this course offended religious defensive and he thought they wanted to do him wrong, but he they didn't. Missed opportunity. Missed that open door. Nehemiah's reason cannot be treated with suspicion. Nehemiah was a political religious figure, theology and ideology, and Book of Ezra, you should read that one in Nehemiah. Nehemiah. All right. Discrimination coping strategy of the Holy Seed was linked of the myth of empty land. Lost cause people. Stressed total exile at empty land is rejecting community in generation. That is the sin in itself. Judeans triggered God's wrath. Second Chronicles 36. Old divisions of past have been restored but the Sabbath rest of the exile now in Israel emerged who had the opportunity of a fresh beginning under Persian rule. If you read Chronicles, all of Israel linked to 12 tribe nation, 12 tribe theme, social, political reunification between reality exiles of northern kingdom of Israel and Judean exile describes Israel in Chronicles, Israel community, God centered around the temple. Israel of Judah, Israel of northern tribes who worship 
God, Israel, those not genealogically Israelite. God considers all his 12 tribes, all his community. That the spirit considers the mood in these appointed times. So, Tamar, that was the other word, it means palm tree. Peace, righteousness, and prosperity. It's the date palm tree of Palestine. Flourishing, tall, upright branches are a symbol of victory and eternal life. It offer references, Re Revelation 7, 9. There is Jeremiah 10, 5, Psalms 92, 12. Kalaba, Kabbal, Kabbalah, tree of life. Divine emanations of God's creation. Nature of revealed divinity, human soul, spiritual path of a, of sent by man. Bible states the date palm tree as the walls of Solomon's temple. It was carved. Also means coins. They were popular coins, shekels. There were palm trees on these silver coins. It has a deep meaning. Hebrew manuscripts, 19th century, has palm branches. Biblical palm means reborn. So, it means prosperity. The Lord is giving, the Lord is giving us hints on how to launch us into our destiny. And it has a lot to do with not holding a grudge. It has a lot to do with having, setting firm tall pillars as a palm tree. In our faith in God that he sent us somewhere because we can conquer this. Because we are to show them the path. And not act bitter and and more righteous and worthy. The Lord is the one of his mercy and grace that has taken us to certain levels. There's no need to retract and to live in fear. Alright? I hope that was not confusing and that you were able to grasp the concept of that. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. I'll put the verses in the, in the description if you wish it so. You can do so. Um, there are some links there. Hallelujah.